Vacuum tubes, developed at the beginning of the 20th century, were the first available semiconductor. These tubes dominated electronic research until the 1930s. It was the advent of radar in World War II that spurred the need for more precise microwave components. A researcher at Bell Labs in the United States named Russell Ohl accidentally discovered the PN junction. He was testing the resistance of a silicon sample that had a crack running across the middle. This was the first modern diode. Bell Labs, after the war, started looking into a semiconductor device with three terminals. This device was ultimately a failure, but was a step in the right direction. They would eventually discover the transistor effect in December of 1947. It was the president of Texas Instruments that saw the potential of the transistor. With the help of another small company from Indiana, they designed the Regency TR1 in October 1954. Texas Instruments started mass producing transistors, proving that they were far more cost effective and portable than the vacuum tube. Our circuit consists of an antenna apparatus to receive the signal, a variable capacitor to tune the input frequency, a frequency amplifier, a capacitive filter, a potentiometer to control the volume, a second amplifier for the audio signal, and a second filter before the speaker. The signal is received by the coils around the antenna rod and tuned by the variable capacitor C2. This capacitor consists of alternating stationary and mobile conductive plates separated by an insulator. When the tuning knob is turned, half of the plates rotate, changing the available surface area between the plates. Less surface area means lower capacitance, changing the frequency received by the antenna apparatus. The signal received goes to the integrated circuit IC1. This component is the equivalent of 10 transistors. The power to this circuit is controlled by the resistor R4 and the diodes D1 and D2. The signal is amplified by this circuit, but is still too weak for audio output. Capacitor C3 filters out the carrier frequency, leaving the pure audio signal. This signal passes through the potentiometer, R3, which controls the gain of the signal. This variable resistance acts as the volume control and can be opened to turn the circuit off. The signal goes through C5 to the audio amplifier, IC2, which is an LM386 amplifier. This integrated circuit amplifies the signal to a suitable audio level. C7 removes the DC component of the signal passing the AC to the speaker. When the power to the radio is turned on, the speaker should output the signal as sound. Unfortunately, our radio did not work because none of us know how to solder properly. However, due to the magic of video editing,